Welcome back to ESPR Boxing YouTube channel. I'm delighted, as always, to be joined by Elliot Grigg. We have just seen Adam Azim become the new European Super Lightweight Champion, defeating Frank Petagin in in Wolverhampton. Um, a stoppage in the tenth round. Um, and yeah, it being the tenth round, Adam Azim is is European champion in his tenth fight. Elliot, give me your your immediate thoughts to what we've just seen. Uh, yeah, you know, I thought it was a good performance from Adam Azim, frankly, very comfortable. I thought actually before the fight happened, myself and Paul discussing it, and I think it was good matchmaking in some ways for them to get Emmanuel Frank Pettigin over um, because, you know, I think he's got, what, six KOs and 24 wins or something, 35 years old. So not really a killer, frankly, but equally at the same time, you beat who's in front of you. And I think Adam Azim battered him, frankly, for the entire fight. I thought he was actually going to get him out there like, slightly earlier, maybe around sort of seven. I'd like to see him, you know, around you know, the body shot knocked down and a couple of rounds after that I thought you know get him out of there but he was absolutely coasting wasn't he and I think also Pettijon was moving around as well he didn't really want to be there he was dancing around making it quite negative at the end of that fight so yeah I think good performance Madame Zim fair play to the lad like you say 10th fight crack on I thought it was yeah very very commanding performance for someone who's still only 21 years old yeah I don't think many people would have given Pettijon a round to be honest I know Adam Zim got a point taken off low blows at one point but it didn't really matter um i just think it was a very dominant performance um considering this was for a european title elliot were you a bit i don't want to say disappointed by petrijan and we don't want to take anything away from adam azim here but would you have expected adam azim to have had more of a challenge considering he's 21 years old this is his 10th fight do you were you expecting a bit more from petrijan or, or is that being unfair to adam azim um, I wasn't expecting much more from Petrjan, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, not because, you know, I, I just like I said, I think it was it was kind of quite clever matchmaking. I don't necessarily blame him, um, but I would have enjoyed more of a challenge, frankly, for, for Adam Azim. But I also feel like, you know, he's twenty one. I'm not. He's also carrying, I think, quite a bit of that boxer roster here. So they're not going to throw. I don't think too much of a challenge in that way. Um, I'd to be perfectly honest with you, obviously building for the future. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's still, I still feel with Adam Azim, and he's only twenty. 21 is a fair play, but I still almost feel like we don't know really where, where Adam Azim's level really currently is, even though you can say, oh, yeah, he's European champion. Is he? I mean, is he between like, you know, is he, is he, would he step up from here and be world level? I don't think so, maybe at the moment. Don't get me wrong, I think he will be at some point, but I wouldn't like to see him up at that level. But I also feel like he needs almost like a, some sort of, some sort of um fight that's going to essentially, you know, sort of act as a barometer as to where he truly is. Because half the guys you see him fight, no one's ever heard of. Ryan Charlton Fair was a good win. But other than that, you look at some of those like 12 and 0s, 21 and 3, 23 and 1 sort of records going. And these guys haven't really got great CVs either. So I can't really sit there and go, you know, can't really sit there and go, oh, that's a really marquee victory for someone who's European champion. But again, maybe it's just clever matchmaking. Maybe it's like you're saying he's young. But I wouldn't, in a weird way, no European champion people can go, oh, okay, do we put him in world level fights now? Do we have a couple more? I mean, it's risky, isn't it, really? I think it's what we'd say. It's risky. There's, there's names up there that you could possibly throw him in with, but uh, I still don't feel we know enough to really to really, you know, say anything other than that Adam Azim is a very hot prospect. Yeah, it's a really interesting topic, isn't it? Because it would be nice to see Adam Azim against a big name that British fight fans are aware of. Like there's that the Dalton Smith fight, which I don't think is going to happen anytime soon, if we're being honest. Harlem Eubank is in the division. Is that fight going to happen? I, I personally don't see it. And at the same time, you mentioned the word kind of, kind of boxer and risk there. And I just think that at the age of 21, there is no, there is no rush. Um, I don't want, I don't think they're going to slow him down to the point where it's just kind of frustrating for everyone. Um, and they're in danger of that happening. But, but yeah, look, it will be very interesting to see, um, yeah, to see if that's to, to, to see if that's to, to see what kind of route they go down if they do actually push him towards some sort of world title eliminator next year. If he defends the European title, if he does look to have some sort of domestic grudge match, it's going to be it's going to be really interesting. Um, I did mention the Dawson Smith fight there, um, Elliot Dawson Smith, um, fifteen and those who said more fights than Adam Azim is about five years older. What side of the fence do you? Do you sit on at the moment? If that fight was to happen in twenty twenty four, is there someone you would you would side with? Oh, oh tough. Uh, like I say, it's tough because we you know we don't see too much of Adam Azim, and obviously we've seen, I suppose, Dalton Smith 
convincing victory last time I was against Sam Maxwell. He's been on some of the other names from a British interest that we know. You know, Casey Benjamin, for example, is one that stands out. I'd probably still, you know, I'd probably lean towards Dalton Smith, to be perfectly honest with you, if it was tomorrow, just for the simple reason that I feel like a bit more experience, been in there with some better names. Um, but equally, like you said, I don't see that fight happening anytime soon. But I would lean if it happen towards towards Dalton Smith slightly. Um I still feel like some of those don't really find anything out really other than the fact that he can hit. Um so I feel like he needs a couple more frankly before he before he looks to take on a challenge like Dalton Smith, frankly, I would lean towards Dalton Smith. Probably 60, 40, 65, 35 sort of percentages. Fair enough. No look I think it's unlikely you see that fight next year. You just you hope we see it in the future. You hope we see it for one of them loses. You hope we see it for one of them is past their best. We shall see. Um just to round up Elliot, one thing I did want to discuss about was um start times um we complain week in week out about how the time that some of these fights start and it kind of feels like we're on the opposite side of the fence here in the sense it it started too early um we what we thought was going to be the main event ended up not being the main event and just kind of a bit of a lack of communication from sky and boxer um just your thoughts on that it was a bit of a bit of a strange one the fight finished at what 9 30 9 35 which I don't have a massive problem with, but some sort of um, notice would have been would have been preferred to rather than <laughs> Owen messaging us on, on in the WhatsApp group. Just give me your thoughts on that. <laughs> yeah, you know what it does feel weird because obviously we, you and I have complained at length about the uh, the start times going long into the into the well into the night into the early morning. I yeah, you could say it sounds a bit early, but actually, to be honest with you, if this if all boxing main events are around this time, I'd be delighted. But I think it's you hit the nail on the head there in a way by saying there was no communication. Uh, we were expecting essentially this fight. I was expecting this fight to start around ten. Everyone's sort of gearing up to ten, and let's be perfectly honest with you: not everyone's going to sit through the undercard. And um, people are going to tune in at different times. I think, considering you've got someone who's a shining light in that roster, I arguably think is a bigger name than what is now the main event on that on that card. Um, I think it was just done. I mean, what's there's no harm in what sticking a couple of tweets out promoting it a bit better, just promoting the fact that he's actually fighting at that time. If you turn on now, it's sort of like a 10 to 10 going, when's Adam Azim on? Someone's going, oh, he's just gone 10 rounds and stopped the guy. No European champion. You're going to be a bit peeved at that. So, yeah, I just think it's not, it's not overly complicated, is it, to just sort of promote 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 it better, promote your events. You've got the fighters there. You've got the crowd there. Mm. Just, you know, tie it all in together, man. A couple of the, you know, communication strategy, social media, use that tool. But even beforehand, just like just stick to the timings. People know when they're going to watch a fight. Yeah, it's bizarre, and I just think you'll have a bunch of people who will be who like boxing, but they also um have a partner, have a family, and they watch say prime time TV between nine and ten PM on a Saturday, and they switch over at ten o'clock in time for the main event, where that main event starts at ten fifteen, ten forty five, eleven fifteen. And I just think, as you said, you get a lot of people who turn on at ten o'clock to um watch Adam Azim. Adam Azim's post-fight interview, which would be a bit, be a bit of a strange surprise. Um, we'll leave it there, really. I have to finish off with a complaint, as as we as we like to do, um, but I think it would be quite right to do so. Leave it there. Um, look, good performance by Adam Azim tonight. Won every round, got the stoppage in the 10th round, and he's, look, he's clearly a special, special, special fighter. Elliot, thank you for your time, and I'll speak to you again soon. Thank you very much, as always, guys. Thank you very much for watching.